Welcome to the planning phase. This phase is critical as it sets the foundation for the entire software project. It is where we define the project's objectives, scope, and the goals. Effective planning ensures that we have a clear roadmap to follow, which helps us in managing our resources, time, and budget. Again, who doesn't want to save on money, right? So let's get started. So planning phase is probably the first milestone that you will have in your STLC process. Everything begins with the planning phase. Consider it like you know planting a seed for your software project. As I said, planning phase is the first step of your SDLC. It involves project objectives, scope, and goals definition. The key activities that we include in a planning phase are the project feasibility analysis, risk assessment, and resource planning. So, how do you define your project objectives and scope? Well, for defining any goal or any objective, you should always follow this technique called as SMART goals. And I do cover a lot of it in my goal setting class. So, if you haven't taken it, go check it out. Now, that being said, what are SMART goals? SMART goals are nothing but anything that you can specify clearly. You can measure it. You can achieve it. You have some relevance that it helps you or it's related to you. And of course, it has to be time bound. So basically, your relevance has to be to the topic on what the project is about, right? So if you create a smart goal for your project as well during your planning, you will definitely have a path forward. That should be the right step to take. Scope defines the project boundaries, including deliverables, timelines, and constraints. There has to be clear objectives and scope. And this usually helps you in setting the expectations right and guide you through the project's journey. The first thing that you do in this planning phase is stakeholder collaboration. You talk to people to understand what the requirements are, what they want to do, what is their vision. So you need to make sure you identify your key stakeholders and their roles. So who can provide you the best information? You should engage with your stakeholders in meetings and discussions to get their inputs and feedback so that you can create a better plan. Collaboration ensures that all the perspectives are considered and expectations are set before you actually step into creating the product. All right, a shout out for myself. I have created a Scrum handbook. If you're interested in reading about Scrum, this book is completely free. You have the book available in the link below. I do take you through a process of creating a fitness app uh, using the Scrum methodology. So do check it out. All right, the next thing is project feasibility analysis. In this phase, you basically analyze the technical, economical, and operational feasibility of your project because ultimately that is all will you know make you successful or a failure. So technical is your tech stack correct? Is the technology that you're using for your service correct? And you know anything related to technology. The next thing is economics. How many resources will you use? What will be the cost of things? So on and so forth. And operational is how does this product or this project fit into the overall picture? Or even from a maintenance perspective, how long you'll be used, how you'll maintain it, and you know what's the purpose, what's the end goal for it, right? So all of that will be covered in your project feasibility analysis. The next thing is risk assessment. Any planning without risk assessment is not a good planning, right? So you need to always identify the potential risk and challenges that could impact the deliverable of your project. You should analyze the likelihood of a risk happening. So identifying a risk is good, but you also need to understand what's the probability of that risk hitting you hard, right? So that way you can put more focus and resolve that risk so that it doesn't become a pain point for you. You need to always develop mitigation strategies, try to document and address high priority risks that are there in your project planning. That way you already have it communicated to the stakeholders that these are the challenges that we may face and you can get the right kind of support. The next is probably one of the most challenging one is resource planning because it is not just the technical resources like servers and things like that. It also includes people. It also includes the budget. If there's travel, there are meals. There are so many things that you have to consider when you're doing a resource planning. You always need to make sure you develop a good resource allocation plan and track and monitor that resource plan during the execution phase so that you know how far away you are from your plan versus, you know, you are meeting your goals primarily. And in most cases, when you execute a project, you will always fall short of your budget. So definitely it is a good idea to keep an eye on it. And once you've done all of this, you've done the feasibility check, you've done the risk assessment, and you've also talked to your stakeholders, uh, you need to create your project plan. A project plan basically is nothing but a detailed outlining of activities and tasks that you're going to do during your project execution. Now, usually you can use a project management tool to conduct and develop and document your project plan. 
you need to also make sure that you ensure that the project plan has some kind of flexibility built into it so that you can accommodate changes or all of a sudden instances that could come and hit you let us recap on what we covered in this lecture so we talked about the planning phase we talked about defining clear and smart objectives and goals for your project you need to talk to your stakeholders and collaborate with them to get the inputs you should also check for your project feasibility analysis you need to make sure you check your risks you check your resource planning and then ultimately create your project plan so what are the common questions that we usually get well how do you handle change change is inevitable and in every phase of sdlc this is the most common thing that we deal with so you're halfway through your planning and you get thrown with a curveball saying that we did not even consider a new set of functionality or a feature right in that case how do you handle it well the simplest way you handle it is you go through a change management project so you say this is my original scope let us plan with it for the change or the missed you know feature let's create a separate plan or maybe a an auxiliary of the plan that way you are already moving in a direction and you have some adjustments that you'll have to make so that you can make sure that you can capture the functionality that was missed in. the next common question is what tools should we use well the most common that i use is microsoft project you can also use jira trello or any other saas project that you see fit or probably you understand the best for your use case and before i sign off i want to make sure that you understand that plans are nothing but planning is everything you need to make sure your planning is as meticulous as possible so that you are cushioned for your executions and again for resources like these or anything related to sdlc in scrum or agile if you need something just hop on to teachingagile.com where i have curated a lot of resources for these topics and if you watch this video till the end please make sure to like the video and if possible subscribe This will really make YouTube happy. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one.